Good morning. Well, good evening. But in the morning for you. Pre-recording here for you guys here. 7.30 on Wednesday night. Good morning. Glad you could be here with us for a little time in God's Word, even if it is pre-recorded. Um, I have my Bible study at Grace Lodge this morning. Today is Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. Um, somebody argued with me over my pronunciation of Monday the other day, and I, I said, you say potato, I say potato. Um, the big thing is that Monday comes from, from uh, oh, hang on a second. Um, Monday comes from the term mandate or command, and that's what Monday Thursday is, God's command, uh, Jesus' command, and the Lord's Supper, take, eat, and take, drink. So that's what the, the day celebrates. Um, Monday, Thursday. Now, we're not going to be reading um, the Monday, Thursday text here today. Um, please, if you have the opportunity this afternoon or evening to go to your church, to your congregation, and to hear uh, the Monday, Thursday readings. Uh, this year, I believe it's Luke 24, 1 to 18, the institution of the Lord's Supper. Um, please do so. Please avail yourself to your congregation to take and eat and take and drink for the forgiveness of sins. For he who believes these words given and shed for you has exactly what they say, the forgiveness of sins. So Monday, Thursday. Good morning, uh, April 14th, Thursday. Let's go ahead and get started here. I can't say hi to each of you individually because I don't know who's gonna be there. Um, I know I will be on my way to Rhinelander. Um, so let's begin here. If you have a service book, LSB, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice. Uh, in the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm on this <clears throat> Monday, Thursday, uh, Psalm 37, verses 1 through 7. My light's flickering. That's a little annoying. Uh, psalm 37, verses 1 through 7. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend, befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. I will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sorry, I had to raise my chair up. It shrunk down. Um, i got to pause here. Just like in the morning before I join with you guys most times, or sometimes as we're starting, I have to clean my glasses. Well, here tonight, as I'm doing this, I have to clean them again. They've got a day's worth of yuck on them. And um, see, I'm sitting in front of lights. There's lights shining in my face, and the dirt really picks up on that and causes a glare on the lenses, making it difficult, uh, difficult to see. Uh, all right, there we go. Our reading, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 28. Exodus 12, 1 to 28. Remember now, we've uh, gone through the nine plagues, and God has told Moses what the tenth plague will be and how, the how when it's done, um, Pharaoh will drive the people out of, out of Israel. But God will put favor um, into the 
into the hearts of the Egyptians and give them their gold and their silver. So Exodus 12, beginning at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old, and you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall not you shall not you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you or destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall not eat unleavened, or you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove all leavening from your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened, from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day, you shall hold a holy assembly. On the seventh day, a, a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days. But what everyone needs to eat, that alone may be prepared by you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month, from the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the first day of the ninth month at evening. For seven days no leavening is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregations of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your dwelling places you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans, and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is on in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this rite as a statute for you and for your sons forever. And when you come to the house or come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, 
you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, for he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Then the people of Israel went and did so. As the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a reason that this reading lines up with Monday, Thursday. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he had gathered with his disciples in the upper room, and they were celebrating the Passover, the Paschal Feast. They were celebrating the Passover, which uh, in the time of the Exodus, the blood of the Lamb protected God's people. Uh, what is coming is the Lamb of God, whose blood will be shed for the forgiveness of all sins on the cross. Christ is the same lamb. These lambs are a foreshadowing of what Christ will be. Christ is our Passover lamb and actually our Paschal lamb. He is, he is the lamb who takes away our sins. He is the lamb who protects us from sin, death, and hell. Notice that the, the blood is painted on the, on the doorpost so that death might not enter into them. Christ's blood is in us such that death, eternal death, might not enter us, right? We, by faith, we receive that blood and are protected by it, and our faith is made stronger, and Christ is in us, right? The meal that Jesus is celebrating, when they've completed the meal of the Passover, the Passover meal, then when supper was finished, he takes the cup and he gives thanks and he gives it to them saying, take, drink, this is my blood given for you. Well, actually he takes bread first. I got it out of order. Got so hooked on blood, I, I forgot about the bread. First he takes the bread, right? When supper was over, gives thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Right? The flesh given for you. Then after he takes the cup and after giving thanks, he gave, gives it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This, in this, this cup is the New Testament shed in my blood for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Right? This cup in this is, is Christ's blood and it's his body. It's the, the Paschal feast that God commands, the Passover feast that God commands Israel to celebrate forever um, has become our feast. And instead of celebrating it once a year, um, what I believe would be the 14th day of Nain, uh, or Nyan, the, the month of Nyan in the Hebrew calendar, we celebrate it every Lord's Day. We celebrate it as, as first uh, a remembrance that he died for us because when flesh and blood have been separated, there is death, but also that he gives us life for where you are fed the body and blood of Christ, he gives you life. He restores life, renews life, reinvigorates faith, right? So this meal becomes the sacrament of the altar, the Lord's Supper, communion, the Eucharist, whatever name we've, we've begun to give it over time. What was the old covenant now becomes the new covenant in the body and blood of Christ Jesus. And so this event foreshadows Christ in the same way that, that, that Isaac, when Abraham brings Isaac to the altar to sacrifice him at God's command and God saves him, in the same way that sacrifice reminds us of what Christ has done or points to what Christ will do on the cross. Only God will not spare his only begotten son, his beloved son where he spared Abraham's son. Um, it's the same as the bronze serpent that's raised up in the wilderness when the fiery serpents are killing God's people. When they get anyone who looks upon the, the bronze serpent raised on the pole will be saved. Anyone who looks upon Christ on the cross in faith is saved from sin, death, and hell. 
these are the same thing. This is a continuation of what God has given. He doesn't do something new in Christ. He fulfills it. He completes it. Not all the blood of beasts from the time of these lambs through God's commands uh, for sacrifice can satisfy and atone for all sin. But the blood of Christ shed upon the Lamb, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Christ's blood shed upon the cross for you, atones for all sin. Exodus, the Lord's Supper. It's the Paschal Feast, the Passover meal, the Lord's Supper. It's a continuation of what God has given us. It's a new thing, but it's the same new thing. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day for today. O oh Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In one of our divine services after the communion, after the words of institution have been said, um, the pastor turns to the congregation and says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you declare the Lord's death until he comes. And then the congregation proclaims, come, Lord Jesus. Right? Um, I take up that cry at uh, after after uh, the resurrection. Monday, Thursday. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And on this Monday, Thursday, we pray, Eternal Savior, how can my heart show its appreciation of your love? How can I serve you best? Who has loved me and given your life for me? You have sealed me in the forgiveness of all my sins and offered me reconciliation and peace in the blessed sacrament that you institute on this day. You have promised to give me with bread and the cup, your body and blood for the remission of all my sins. Oh, what amazing love, what riches of divine wisdom. In awe and wonderment, I ponder this gracious gift. May I ever appreciate this blessed sacrament that you have bidden me to use as a memorial of your death and a monument of your redemptive love. May I come worthily each time I approach your altar. O oh, Savior, cast me not away from your presence. Let not my sins remain with me because of impenitence of heart or because I doubt your word and your promise. Let me become one with you and all your saints as I receive with them this blessed sacrament. Make me yours and give me strength to amend my sinful life and walk closer to you. Preserve in your church this blessed sacrament given on this sacred day. Let thousands and ten thousands find through it the assurance of forgiveness, peace, and salvation, and grant that I and all who are yours may be faithful to your word and sacraments, that your name be glorified, your will be done, and we at last live with you in your eternal kingdom forever. Amen and amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are in need this day, that not only of your forgiveness, but also of your assurance and your comfort in sickness and disease and in suffering. 
We pray especially for those this day who have asked for our prayers. Ashley, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, and Brianne. May you have mercy upon them and they, may they be ever mindful of the grace and the strength and the mercy that comes through your son, Jesus Christ, who has given us his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. May our faith remain in it always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, God's blessings upon your day. Again, if you have the opportunity, if your congregation celebrates Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, please go. Please receive the Lord's body and blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, that your faith might be renewed and strengthened and you might be renewed in the spirit of God. God's peace be with you. And we will see you again here Friday morning, which I won't, don't think I'll be pre-recording. So Friday morning, right here with you again. God's peace be with you.